The views and opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect those of Access Fort Wayne, the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting groups. If you'd like to produce a show, call us at 260-421-1250. Welcome back to my show. This is Patty Hunter of Patty's Page. Today's guest is from last week, and her name is Constance Cumby. Hello, Connie. Welcome back. Thank you. And we were talking about the New Age movement. Um, I was in it for uh, eight years or maybe more. I don't know when I was in my 20s and 30s, so, yeah, maybe about 10 or something like that. And I was heavily into it, and, and then I met up with Connie in 1988. 1988. In Toronto, Ontario. Toronto, Ontario, no less. Yeah. That's where I was born. And uh, she was the one who told me the truth about the occult and what dangers I was in. So, uh, without any further ado, we will begin our show talking about the New Age and our involvement in it. My involvement, not yours. Okay. <laughs> How you got me out of it. You are my mentor. Without you, I, I would not have... Uh, and it's people like you who gave me the encouragement to keep on going. Because there were many attempts to say I had made the whole thing up. And I used to say, I wish I had, because if I made it all up, I could make it all go away. Oh, no, I can't. But can't it was I mean, the New Agers coming out and saying, you've been honest, thank you, that gave me the courage to go on. And you were certainly a major factor. Oh, okay. Well, you know, right now, in this library, there is a book called Hidden Dangers of the Rainbow that Constance Cumby had written. Uh, back in what year? I finished the book in 19, started it in 81, finished it in 82, it was released in 83. So can I have the book? I'll just this show. Is, I guess that's the well-worn library copy. This is a well-worn, uh, she said, library copy here in Fort Wayne. Uh, can you zero in on that? Okay, let me, there you go. And it's called Constance Cumbie, The Hidden Dangers of the Rainbow. Now, this is a New Age movement. Uh, and our coming age of barbarism. Bar 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 oh, yeah, barbarism. Yeah. Barbarism. <laughs> Sorry, uh, my English. She's not too good today. But uh, we're going to discuss that. Okay. And what we, uh, I understand there is new age here in Fort Wayne? That's very funny. I, when I started, when I found this stuff, I was on fire to warn other folks about it once I re realized the ramifications. And so I told my sister, and who she's no longer with us, but she was in Fort Wayne. And uh, I told my mother about it. <coughs> Excuse me. And my um, mother was skeptical, but my sister mailed me an article to Detroit from the Fort Wayne Journal-Gazette about a new bookstore opening in Fort Wayne called Rainbows of Life. This was back in 1981. And she said, Connie, this looks like the things you were talking about. And I thought, it sure does. So when I came down for Thanksgiving that year, I decided to go check it out. And this was Shortly, about three weeks after I had heard Benjamin Krem speak in Detroit to a packed audience uh, proclaiming the Christ is now here, and about tw a hall that seated 1,300 was packed, and the standing room was packed, and it was quite a spectacle. And I had that on my mind. And then they were running ads in New Age magazine saying, expect the Christ in the spring of 1982. So I brought my mother to the bookstore, which was then called Rainbows of Life, 
and it was very well stocked with New Age literature. There were many, um, there were probably, I understand, about a dozen co-owners of that store. And I showed her the, stand, the ads on the pages saying, Expect the Christ in the spring of 1982, and I opened the Lucy, the Alice Bailey books, which were on the shelf, and showed her some of those contents. And I probably had about, I did, I spent about $300 added to your economy here, $300 that day. Buying all those books? Buying all those books, but um, a number of other books that weren't already in my library. Mm -hmm. And I uh, came up there, and of course, with that, you're kind of a preferred person in anybody's bookstore or anybody's shop. And the gal standing at the counter said, uh, she was the person in charge of the cash register. She was talking to a customer, and she said, I'll bet the average person that drives by here doesn't know what these rainbows really mean. I'll bet they don't know what it means when they see a rainbow on a billboard or a bumper sticker. Yeah. And I'm standing right there, and I said, well, I know what they mean. And she said, what do they mean to you? And I said, same thing as a swastika. And when I said that, she froze. She utterly froze. And then she said very hopefully, what does a swastika mean to you? And I said, same thing as a rainbow. I said, they're both groups, banners for all cult groups to see, merge behind, and unite in an expectation of overthrowing the existing order. And Which Hitler was in. And anyway, she was quite startled, and the, another man had entered, and he's been prominent in the New Age movement. In fact, he's a public figure, so I'll name him. His name's Conrad Sattel. I understand he's still active in the New Age movement to this day. Is he still Lewis alive? Last, pardon? He's still alive? I believe he may be. He was the last time I checked him on Google, unless something's happened in the meantime. Oh, he must be but anyway, he was he joined the came in and joined the conversation at that point, and I said, "Why are they using a six 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 on the cover of the Aquarian Conspiracy?" And the gal said to me, "She said, what's that numerology?" And I said, "You know very well what that means." I said, "That is a symbol for the beast, for the Antichrist." And at that point, then the young man said something, and I said, "Conrad." And I said, so you're going to take over the world in the spring of 1982. And he said, you must have heard Benjamin Krem speak. I said, yes, I certainly did. I said, and I've read Alice Bailey. I've read David Spangler. I have read Marilyn Ferguson. And I know all about the plan. And he said, you don't like the plan? And I said, no. I said, I don't like, I don't like Marilyn Ferguson. Actually, I did get acquainted with her in the course of that work. The most of the prominent New Agers were curious about me and at least wanted to try to meet me. Yeah. And I did meet her uh, several times eventually. For she wanted to have almost summit meetings where she could talk about her concerns and try to dissuade me. And I, of course, I was intent on trying to convert her. Don't know if we were ever successful or not. She's dead now. Mm. I said, I don't like Marilyn Ferguson. I don't like Alice Bailey. I said, I don't like the New Age movement. And I don't particularly like rainbows anymore now that I know what you're using them for. And anyway, it was like we were just two adversaries squaring off. I paid for my purchases, wrote the check. And then the gal did something unusual. She stood back and she put her hands on her hips and said, good luck on your crusade. And I handed my stack of books to my mother. I put my hands on my own hips, and I looked her dead in the eye, and I said, good luck on your movement surviving my crusade. <laughs> and uh, I have to tell you, I was in Fort Wayne one year earlier. One year later, they had moved over to a, a place, I think it was Summit Place or something like that. It was down by the old canal. Yeah. And it, it, she was very respectful to me that year, but there, was, there were things I did not know. I did not know until I met this gal's father in Muscatine, Iowa, a few years later in 1988. And he introduced himself to me, and he was deeply concerned 
about his daughter who was one of the owners of this bookstore, Rainbows of Life. Mm -hmm. And he showed me her picture and it was the same one I'd had the encounter with. And then he told me that she was a graduate of Moody Bible Institute in Chicago. Now that did startle me. And I thought it was very tragic. And it shows how terribly vulnerable each and every one of us is to this thing. If you don't have discernment, do you? It's not just even discernment. We all have stresses in ordinary life. Yeah. We all have traumas. Everybody has them. And come into my parlor, said the spider to, to the, the fly. fly in the and we yeah. are all vulnerable at one time or another. We're sometimes looking for easy answers easy outs and this usually poses itself as a stress release or a way to foresee an uncertain future or something that's going to make you popular or make you healthy it takes a variety of guises and then people get into the what they call their meditative states their hypnotic states and from then on, like Marilyn Ferguson said in The Aquarian Conspiracy, some people explore at the edges, the psychotechnologies as she called them. And some people drop back out of fear and some people go on and explore more deeply. Well, that was, that was the sad thing about it. And we're all vulnerable. This thing is so much in our culture. Probably very few people have escaped it, if any. Maybe some of the Amish back in the woods where not much has reached them of the, uh, the, of the, old, world, but the yeah. old ways. But yeah. it, it has totally permeated our culture to one extent or another. Yeah. And that was its strength, but that was also its weakness because word spread uh, on what was going on as well. And I remember I started sharing this with just people I knew in my old political circles in Detroit and they were the early incubator days of my work. And I was known politically, and I remember when I found this stuff, I was terrified. Mm -hmm. And I'd been practicing law for s six years at yeah, that point, so seven years when my work went natural, yeah. mm -hmm. and or national. And I remember saying to myself, political suicide, professional suicide, political suicide, professional suicide. And all at once, the thought came over me, nothing can happen to you until God is ready. That's if right. God is ready, there is nothing you can do to stop it. And it right. is God you have to account to when you get done anyway. So with that, I went about it. But I had support often from where I least expected it. I had opposition often from where I least expected it. And the New Agers that I showed the materials to, suddenly they were saying, you're right, you're correct. They were handing me other things, asking, begging me to talk to their other friends, a newspaper reporter up in Detroit who wrote a page and a half major article for the Detroit Free Press on my work had been in the New Age movement. And when I, after she looked at my materials, she brought reporter friends in, had them fly in from around the country to stay with her. And she'd have always have a small group of them and they would take me out to dinner. I'd never get much to eat because they were busy picking my brain trying to learn more about this. And then in April, um, in March of 1982, uh, not too long after the syzygy, well, the syzygy was the date that I met the newspaper reporter. What's the syzygy? That was when the planets came um. and a, line, a point of alignment, and the New Agers were convinced that something big was going to happened that day. In fact, there was a speech in Fort Wayne, Indiana, according to the article that reporter wrote in the Detroit Free Press, that there was a man from Wyoming, Michigan, who was going to be coming down, head of the Coptic Fellowship up there, and preaching and talking at the Fort Wayne YMCA on the three stages of the Christ's reappearance. Wow. And I remember that day being terribly discouraged. There was nothing we could do to stop this. This thing was so powerful. We honestly thought we were going to have to run into the woods fast when this thing came down because Benjamin Krem, the spokesman for the group that ran those ads, was saying that, that uh, how terrible this was going to be. There was going to be the sword of cleavage for those who refused to cooperate with it, and we knew the biblical prophecies. Uh, and so we thought maybe this thing was coming down rapidly. 
And <coughs> my son drove, I, my son read me the story by the Detroit Free Press reporter. And Zoom not doom, and it said that the syzygy was something wonderful, that it meant a new Messiah might be on the way. And I looked at that story all day. It was a very gloomy day weather-wise. There were floods, and it looked like an apocalyptic day to tell the truth. And I was just so discouraged. I thought, there's nothing we can do to stop this. This thing's too far gone. I just hope the weather's better than this when we have to run. <laughs> and I, I, I'll never know what made me do it, but it, yeah. it's about 3 o'clock that afternoon, I picked up the phone, and I called the Detroit Free Press, and I asked to speak to the author of that article, who had written several New Age articles that I had noted in the Detroit Free Press. And I said she wasn't available, and I said, my name is Constance Cumby. I'm an attorney in downtown Detroit, and I have some information that might be of interest to her. Yeah. And she called me back a few minutes later, and uh, I was going to say something sharp to her. I said, you've written several articles about the New Age movement, and she said, yes, I have. She sounded so frightened I couldn't bring myself to say anything to her, which is nasty to her, which is very good advice. Mm -hmm. Because this thing can lend itself to sarcasm, but that's the wrong way to go with people. That's right. I, I remember I laughed at a couple of things that we were talking about. It is a serious topic. Um, getting caught up in the New Age movement. Uh, there are other words for it now, um, uh, other terminologies for yeah. it. But well, now they're saying, as they yeah. did before, that this thing is under our radar, that they're flying under our radar using the new terminology of global civil society and, global, and public theology. And uh, many of them are making claims that what is taking place in the Middle East right now is part of their global revolution. Today I noticed, and it's up on my blog spot, yeah. that Spain now is having similar riots and protestations in the public square. And it looks very much like what I saw when I entered and, and started this researching in, in, the, in the 80s. The faces made up theatrical productions. Right. And uh, like they're set up for street or guerrilla theater. And, so it, and they're saying now they're on the march again. Rene Wadlow uh, wrote about that. And he, he was a name that flew under my radar for a long time, but he's been active with all the forces that I've written about, including Lucis Trust, Lucifer, which started life, believe it or not, as Lucifer Publishing Company. Oh, yeah. I, I have three that. books in my personal library from yeah. when they were Lucifer Publishing Company. Oh, yeah. So, anyway, but it's been, she, that reporter, uh, I remember she, um, once she was saw the material, she was dumbfounded, and she was catching things that I wasn't catching. And she, uh, she had asked, said she wanted to come over to my office and look at my materials right away. And uh, I, uh, she uh, then said, what made you decide to call me today? And I said, Ruth, I really can't explain it. I said, I was looking at your article and felt like you need, I needed to speak with you immediately. And she said, you don't know it. She said, well, first she said, looking at my old articles, you must have become very angry. And I said, yes, I did. She said, I'll bet you thought of writing nasty letters to my editor. And I said, yes, I did. She said, it's a good thing you didn't. I would not have listened. Good advice. And then she said, what made you decide to call me today? And I said, Ruth, I really can't explain it. I said, all at once I was looking at your article and felt it important that I speak with you immediately. And she said, you don't know it. But 15 minutes before you called, I went to the ladies' lounge of the free press. I got down on my face, Eastern style. And she said, I was going to pray to Buddha. She said, all at once I changed my mind. Okay. I decided to pray to Jesus. I prayed to Jesus and asked him to send me revelation. She said, 15 minutes later, you called. Look, now I have revelation. And she was on fire. Oh. And she wrote the articles that brought my work to public attention. Right. And it was funny how that happened because we were exchanging in communication almost daily after she had been to my office on March 10th. And when I received a letter in late March that they were going to run major newspaper ads in late April, 
I called her, and she called me back and said her editor said that if she if they did a blitz, she had permission to do a story. And I said, okay. And then she called me back a few minutes later. She was crestfallen. Uh -huh. And she said, did I have the telephone number for Tara Center? They're the folks that ran that ad. In fact, there's a copy of it on that flyer, which happens to be the flyer from the day I met you in Toronto, Ontario. I thought that would make a good, this is, oh, okay. that's the full page newspaper ad. It's also on the back of my book. Oh, yeah. okay. Um, this is how I was introduced to uh, Connie many moons ago, if you don't mind. Uh, I'll show this piece of paper. I don't know why I took that thing off. Uh, now everything's loose. Okay. Can we uh, zero in? This is the newsletter, the brochure that was introduced to me, 1988, November. It was probably... It probably was no, November 27th, 1988. Show again. And uh, this was good. This was good. It, it's, it was called New Age Movement Exposed with Constance Cumby and Cry. Uh, yeah, if I had not spoken to you, I mean, you were just God sent. You were just got sent. I mean, without that, I would have been lost, really. I would not have been happy. I would have been spiraling down, down a, a long corridor down into hell itself. I know that. Well, that reporter, uh, I, they sent full-page news. They, I called her and said they're going to run full-page newspaper ads, and I read her the story, and she called me back and said she had permission to do the uh, do an article if they did, ran a blitz, meaning ran those ads. Yeah. And then she called me back and said, did I have the telephone number for Tara Center, for the group Tara. that ran those ads? And yeah. I gave it to her. And she called me back a few minutes later, jubilant. And she said the advertising manager of the Detroit Free Press had gotten wind of the situation. And he said, by golly, if these folks were going to run newspaper ads, that with the cost between $18,000 and $25,000 a piece, he wanted the Detroit Free Press to have a piece of the action. It was a time of economic recession for Detroit. And so he called Tara Center and made his pitch. And they told him they only intended to run those ads in world class newspapers. Oh, well, that wasn't very And nice. they certainly did not consider the Detroit Free Press to be a world class paper. They needed lessons in tact I also. I would say so. And anyway, you know what her editors at the Free Press told her at that point. They said, go to it. Go for it. Yeah. And so the ads <laughs> ran worldwide April 25th, 1982. Right. And May 5th, 1982, the Detroit Free Press ran a page and a half picture story on my work, which was to complete shock of many in the local New Age community because they thought this girl was still with them. Oh. <laughs> they didn't know she'd switch sides. Oh, my. And then it was picked up on, and uh, I was on the road, frankly, for seven solid years everywhere. I was down here a couple of times speaking. But I mean, I was suddenly, I was on planes crisscrossing the country, and I thought it would be very simple, Christians versus lions. It wasn't that simple. Some of them were us. Some of us, uh, became, some of them became us. I'll let me put it that yeah. way. There were honest conversions out of it. Okay. There were many who pretended to be us, who at least were either flirting or a fifth column, or were them. Yeah. And one of the shocking things I discovered, it took me about 20 years to get to the bottom of it, but I did not understand why I had as much Christian opposition as I did particularly from the evangelical community. And I knew there was some subversion from Unification Church, which was a major player in the New Age networks. But what I did not know was that there were interlocking directorates between that prayer breakfast network and the Institute of Noetic Sciences, one of the all-time most powerful New Age organizations in Petaluma, California. Mm -hmm. And that the same major, that somebody was writing major checks to both, and of course it was to their financial interest to silence me. 
And it was, I went through a lot, I've been through a lot. They say um, pioneers get shot in the back, but settlers reap the reward. I certainly never got rich off of it, even oh. though my work book was a number one bestseller, but uh, we did get the word out. The word that went out worldwide on it, and they, I'm afraid they can never put it back in a box. It went out to the extent that some New Agers that didn't repent of it were complaining that they had been marginalized for the last 20, 30 years, that they'd been severely marginalized. And now some of their writers are saying, ha ha, we've been flying under everybody's radar with global civil society. Right. And it's not as quite as, uh, let's shall we put it, sexy terminology as New Age movement, which caught everybody's attention a little bit more. Mm. But. Wow. It certainly has not gone away, but I think we did slow it down to us, or God it. slowed it down long yeah. enough to get lots of people warned. You know, without uh, people like you and shows like mine, I'm not bragging, uh, people will not know how dangerous this new age or whatever it's called now. What's it called again? The global civil, some, some people still call it the New Age movement, some people call it the radical middle, the third way, the third force, but the new in term among the scholars and the academics is global civil society. Global civil society. Now that, that that's dangerous. Um, Patty, can I tell them what the term New Age is based on? Well, we, we have, have time about, for that. Do you have time to be able to, how, many, how much further? It'd be yes, very, 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 very quick encapsulation. The belief is that every 2,160 years or so, the world passes through another phase of the zodiacal cycle, oh. like age of Aquarius, age of Pisces, so on and so forth, and that we're coming to the conclusion, or we've come to the conclusion, because oh, yeah. they're saying now we are in the age of Aquarius, that we've advanced through that, and that we need a new avatar, new leadership, new order to go into the new age. And that is a, that is a shared expectation by many. And like I said, it's used to back and before I discovered what it was all about, it was I thought it was great fun when people would say, "What's your sign?" And ever since I learned what it was all about, I've shied right right away from that. Every time I, I've had psychics trying to write to me, either send me letters in the mail. I have one minute. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, uh, Connie, we have to have you on again sometime in the future. I don't know when. I would love to come back. Oh, yes. Uh, you have been a joy to listen to. And thank you, Connie, for thank coming you, on to my show again. And thank you for being a brave trooper in this over the years. Oh, thank you. Uh, she's my mentor, people. And, uh, well, I'd like to say thank you for showing uh, up as a guest, and thank you, people, for coming on to uh, my not coming on to but coming to my show and listening to it. And may we meet again. And this is Patty Hunter of Patty's Page. God bless, and may we meet again. Thank you.